news you can use it's 902 a.m on uh, pacific sorry uh, a little afternoon on the east coast and today is the 30th of august 2022 I'd like to welcome everybody news you can use we're going to get started talking about rental evictions uh, for the first time ever uh, the united states saw the median rent price exceed two thousand dollars during the month of july um, Prior to then, even a year ago, it was only $1,500 was the average rent in the United States. So it's gone up significantly since then. Right now, there are currently eight and a half million people behind on rent as of uh, the end of this month right now. 3.8 million of those people are in uh, the process of eviction or foreclosure, uh, I'm sorry, eviction. They're going to lose their house probably within the next 60 days. Uh, there's going to be a whole bunch of properties coming onto the market. Why is this? Well, since 2016, rent increases have gone uh, up at a faster rate than even house prices, believe it or not. So uh, rents have gone up a total of about 25% just in the last year and a half, most of that in the last year. Uh, people who are renting properties are getting to the point where they can no longer afford them. It's getting to be ridiculously expensive out there. And there's a big demand and no supply in the affordable housing segment. So in spite of everything that's gone on, and now that we've got more houses on the market than ever for purchase, uh, very few of these things are going to be for rent. Ex wait till the end of this year, though. You're going to see a whole bunch of stuff come onto the market. Um, let me give you some stats here. We can talk about this. Uh, evictions currently in some areas of the country, Tampa 52% above historical highs. Uh, Houston, 90% above historical highs. Minneapolis, St. Paul, 94%. In other words, almost a double the maximum they've ever had get evicted or eviction court filings uh, currently than they've ever had before. So this is going to be a bloodbath over the next 60 days. Some of the states like California are trying to head that off at the past. They're trying to make it very hard uh, for landlords to evict. California is trying to permanently ban evictions. I'm not sure how that's going to work. They put a national or a statewide uh, moratorium on rent increases, but there are some loopholes in it that some landlords are, are attempting to get away with. Um, it, it's some, and some of the states are just letting the, the calendar open wide up and figure, you know, people who can't pay rent, tough. You know, we're going to go ahead and evict them. We're going to turn those over. Um, some states, and a lot of states have received, almost every state actually has received federal money to give landlords some assistance to help uh, pay those back bills that happened during COVID. Uh, a lot of the states haven't used hardly any of that money. Some have used none of that money. Uh, they don't want to be beholden to the federal government. Um, and, and a couple of states, actually Nebraska and Arkansas, refused to even take the money. So. Uh, we've got some some issues going on there. Uh, there's money available for these landlords who aren't getting paid, but it's not going to get distributed. Um, anyway, what what's happened is folks have had to rely on their credit cards to make payments. Uh, in some cases, they've had to take out loans to make their rental payments, use savings account or selling off assets. In some extreme cases, they've actually had to raid a retirement account. Uh, in order to make these payments, and they're just not going to be able to handle it. We, what we've got is we got a rental rate at two thousand bucks here uh, nationally that is higher than most people can afford. Remember, you shouldn't spend more than about a third maximum of the amount that you've got uh, available in terms of a take home on your lodging, your housing, your lodging, that kind of thing. Um, in, in many cases, it's fifty percent or more. Some cases, sixty percent. So rents uh, are going up much higher and much faster than wages, um, and we're going to have a real problem. Now, what does that mean for all of us who are in this business? Um, first of all, you know, we talked the other day about the number of houses available on the market through the MLS. It was sub 500,000, was 490,000 or something like that available through the MLS. There's going to be 3.8 million homes available probably by the end of this year that are gonna, uh, going to entail evictions happening over the next 60 days alone, some point in time, these eight and a half million people who are behind on rents, you know, at some point the fit hits the shan and someone stays after school for detention, right? 
So if people can't pay, eventually they're going to get evicted. You're going to create a flood of properties. This is probably the biggest source of properties we're going to see coming on the market maybe ever since at least the Great Recession and probably will exceed the number of homes that came onto the market during the Great Recession. This, I believe, is going to provide the, the biggest impetus for prices to drop out there in the marketplace. Um, and probably your most motivated seller out there over the next six months is going to be somebody who's a landlord who's in eviction court. So, uh, you know, if you can get yourself uh, a list of people who have filings uh, in eviction court landlords, it would be a great time to send them a letter and say, listen, are you tired of all the hassle of being a landlord, going to court, et cetera, et cetera, I can buy your house. Remember, most of these houses in the US today have equity in them um, and the equity is holding up even though the prices are dropping. So it would be a good opportunity for you to take somebody else's burden off their hands and make yourself uh, you know, a decent profit as a result of that. Not taking advantage, you're actually helping these people. I guarantee you, being a former uh, a reformed landlord uh, who hates being the landlord, uh, the last thing in the world that a landlord wants to do is have to go to eviction court and go in there and testify. And everybody thinks the landlords are the evil monsters out there. Um, and nobody likes to be in that position. And so it is a great opportunity for people to be able to go and say, you know what, I'm done. I don't want to be a landlord anymore. I'll just sell this. I'll dump it. I'll get rid of it for whatever it costs. Um, you know, because with social activism out there, a lot of these 3.8 million people who are going to be evicted in the next two months are going to go on the news and say, you know, this evil person, so-and-so, my landlord, you know, put me and the kids out, you know, right before Thanksgiving or whatever. And, you know, it, of course, nobody talks about the landlord, you know, had a contract, uh, a deal's a deal type thing and wasn't getting paid on that contract. They're just going to look at the poor people who've been evicted and take their side without looking at both sides. So it is a tough business to be in with all the normal economic activities going on. It's especially bad. And now that the Fed continues to increase interest rates, I expect here in September, they're gonna go up another 0.75, 75 basis points in their rate. <clears throat> and that's just gonna put more pressure on people who rent homes for a living or you know for their uh, housing. Uh, and so contact those folks. It'll be a great time for you uh, to be able to get discount properties, maybe buy things subject to or with seller finance. And uh, you know, you, you can decide for yourself whether landlording is for you. Uh, you know, we have a, a process that we talk about and that we teach uh, called lease optioning, which is a great way to go. That's not quite landlording, it is landlording, but it's at a different level because you are renting, uh, renting to own the people who are basically owners in training, who, who want to be able to uh, you know, go out there and eventually own a home. And, and those folks tend to have a little bit higher income, <clears throat> perhaps be a little bit more responsible, although a lot of what's going on is not anybody's fault. It is just economics, the way it works. Some people win, some people lose. And you know, it's like musical chairs. You end up sitting in a different chair at the end when you started. That's just how it goes out there, unfortunately. Um, you know, this is the way society is today. So uh, keep your eyes and ears open, look for landlords, desperate landlords, um, and, and be careful about, uh, you know, renting to folks who've had an eviction and had to be forced out because like people who've had a car repossessed, those tend to be the folks that are the least credit worthy. So you should be careful from that standpoint. Uh, at least if you're going to get in the rental business, I'd recommend using a professional manager, uh, you know, to do that for you. So anyway, that's news you can use for today.